All right, so um, I have the task to take you through the governance needed for an implementable uh, national action plan for on uh, antimicrobial uh, resistance. Uh, this, uh, this course is extremely well structured. You know, every day corresponds to one of the objectives of the, the global uh, action plan. And uh, today is the last part, and we are going to deep dive into policy issues. All right, so this is just uh, uh, the outline of my course. No conflict of interest. Disclose. Everybody here uh, knows that I'm working for Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, based in Ethiopia. But it is a very young institution. Uh, it has been uh, established five years ago. And just want to give you a background. You know, the journey has started in Abuja, in Nigeria, in 2016. And uh, up to the launch uh, of the institution in 2016, uh, 2017 uh, in Addis Ababa, and you can see here uh, the formal president of Guinea, the one that just left by coup d'etat, you know, <laughs> the formal. Here you have our formal uh, uh, chairperson of the African Union Commission, Madame uh, uh, Nkosazana and Lamini Zuma, uh, my formal commissioner, and here is the, the former uh, Minister of Health of Nigeria, and uh, also um, he was at that time appointed uh, the, the, uh, the vice chair of the governing board of the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And here you have my former director. I'm somewhere at the back there, but you know, I'm not important, so I cannot be there you know, at the front. Uh, so <clears throat> Africa CDC um, is guided by what you call the Agenda 2063. When um, AU reached 60 years in 2060, uh, in, in, in 2013, uh, 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 2013, the continent came together, you know, to pave the way for the development in the next 60 years. So the Agenda 2063 has, in its aspiration, one goal three, uh, the health issues. So by 2063, Africa will be read of all the neglected tropical diseases and all communicable and infectious diseases such as Ebola. Uh, and then Ebola was there, huh? you know, we had challenges on Ebola, so we put it in um, and brought under control. Robust integrated system will be in place to significantly reduce non-communicable diseases and lifestyle changes related to disease. So this is what, and we have, you know, out of this, we have three big, what we call the flagship programs on, uh, in Africa. The open skies, and you know, antimicrobial resistance will travel. If we don't clean you know, well our hands, we can carry them. So the free movement of people with the African passport. Oops, yes. And uh, one African market with the Africa continental free trade area that is operationalized the, this year uh, in uh, January. So this is the framework within which we, we work. So Africa CDC has a strategic plan. It has been established in 2016, uh, 2017. And from 2017 to 2020, uh, 21, this year, our first strategic plan is coming to an end. Uh, this is the vision and the mission. The mission is to strengthen the capacity, capability, and partnership of Africa's public health institution to detect, respond quickly and effectively to disease threats and outbreaks based on science, policy, and data-driven interventions and programs. So, coronavirus pandemic is a huge test for Africa CDC. And so far, we are coordinating very well, and we are doing extremely well as a continent. So, that is it for Africa CDC. Just want and um, we have published in 2017 with the director, Dr. John Kengason, myself, and uh, another co-author, the New Public Health Order, has a comment in the Lancet Global Health with uh, four pillars, and this is what is guiding our work today. We, ha you know, we want to have a continent with strengthened public health institutions. We want to have strengthened public health workforce. The workforce is a huge problem in Africa. When we take, for instance, epidemiologists, the 
continent of 1.3 billion, we were supposed to have 6,000 epidemiologists at master degree level. But today, there are 1,900 for all Africa. And if you go to um, you know, the ratio per inhabitant, WHO said one epidemiologist for 200,000 people. So we need 4,000 more. We need globally, uh, you know, for the continent, 6,000 epidemiologists. But we are not yet there. So that, that, that is one of the reasons we want. Expand manufacturing of vaccine, diagnostic, and therapeutics. This is one of the goals. And we know that the global world let Africa down during this pandemic. Even now, there is the issue to access to vaccines, issue to access to diagnostics, issue to access to therapeutics. So we want, you know, uh, to produce our own vaccines, diagnostics, and uh, therapeutics. And of course, respectful action-oriented partnership. We don't want a partnership that will come to say that this is the good thing to do in Africa. We want to be consulted. We want to work together and action-oriented. Nobody can sit in Geneva and say we are going to conceptualize for Africa. Come, let's work together and we can find a gray area where we can really do things together. So, back on MR now. In most countries, the greatest challenge is not writing a national action plan, but implementing it uh, and demonstrating sustained action. And this is not me. It is what uh, UN Interagency Coordination Group on IMR said in June 2018. I'm not going to take you through. Uh, during this week, we, we know how it comes and uh, it is uh, in collaboration with WHO, FAO, and OIE to assist countries in preparing and referring their national action plan. So this is the background, uh, quickly. Still, I'm not going to take you through. It has been said enough during this, you know, the, no, the cost of not addressing it, and also the challenge in the uh, limited income uh, countries. So there is a consensus, right, to ensure appropriate use of antibiotics in one health concept, okay? We need also to er eradicate uh, and treat uh, influence in both animal and human uh, health. We need to improve prevention in all sectors and ensure that all who need them have appropriate access to regulated supply of quality assured available antimicrobials. Extremely important, so regulations. And that is why the consensus is to develop the national action plans. But when it comes to governance, then the global health governance as a three political you know, space where we need to navigate. And I want you to keep this, 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 this thing in mind. You have the global governance for health. You have the governance for global health. And you have global health governance. Extremely important. All these trees, the, 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 the boundaries are not very clean, but what we need to, to remind ourselves here is that they are all three highly relevant and managing them well can support the progress of public health in a global environment, right? Also, they are all three driven by concentration of power, interest, values, which in turn translate into political and commercial determinant of health. Yesterday we were mentioning the cost of diagnostics, the cost of this and that, and everything is related here. So have that one in mind while we are going through uh, this. Now, this is how the, the, the Global Governance for Antimicrobial uh, uh, Resistance proposal was made. So there are some technical advisory groups. And uh, the standing committee, of course, is WHO, FAO, uh, UIE, and UNEP. And there is also uh, the Global Steering Committee with the deadlines, you know, and the delivering, of course, a global uh, multi-stakeholder agreement in less than 10 years. So that is how uh, it is said. And member states are uh, feeding into each of uh, this uh, uh, global governance structure for antimicrobial resistance. And of course, the, the, at the Global Steering uh, uh, Committee uh, or Board, 
there is a scientific and policy uh, synthesis with these different uh, uh, pillars that are, are, are working there. Now, at the continental level, we have looked at what is happening at the global arena, and we have tried to translate it into our needs on the continent. And uh, <coughs> we, as African, uh, African Union family, we develop what we call a common uh, uh, African position on antimicrobial resistance. And since the establishment of Africa CDC, this was one of the first tasks that we delivered. And uh, already in March, Africa CDC was launched in January, 31st January. But in March, you know, Africa CDC convened a strategic planning meeting on IMR to identify priorities for actions. Okay? And in October, the same year, we released this framework on antimicrobial resistance. And the, the head of state and government, they endorsed the common African position last year uh, in 2020. And we have now currently the antimicrobial resistance control 2020-2025 uh, uh, that is in place to govern all the work that we are doing at a uh, continental level. So this is just you know the, the content. Everything I'm seeing here, you can just Google it and you will find it, OK? Uh, they, 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 they are in the public domain there. So this is the, the <coughs> how it is set. Africa, African Union family is a big institution, and even the departments have changed. The names have changed uh, because we are uh, uh, on a uh, reform process now. And uh, <coughs> where you see in red, these are the institutions within the African Union that have you know, mandates you know, on working on antimicro uh, antimicrobial resistance. So, we have brought all this uh, together to, <coughs> to try to coordinate uh, or to govern the, the antimicrobial resistance issues in Africa. So now, when we talk about the concept of governance, it is challenging and complex, really. Extremely challenging and complex. And uh, what governance is not, if we need, to, we need to start by there, then it is uh, very helpful, really. Governance is not synonymous of go with government. It is not, okay? Addressing governance issues, therefore, does not exclusively rest on actions of government, but also other societal organizations. That is why we have, you know, uh, patient organizations, civil society organizations. We have many, many, many other organizations that, you know, are stakeholders in, in all governance issues. And uh, uh, various issues, you know, <coughs> Effort to define governance have been undertaken, and uh, we have to widely uh, uh, recognize or acknowledge uh, 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 a reference by UNDP and the WHO. For UNDP, uh, governance um, encompasses five governance principles uh, legitimacy and vote, direction, performance, accountability, and fairness. All right? And for WHO, governance is discussed as a form of stewardship. And for instance, a stewardship was uh, part of it. We have seen it during the presentations uh, uh, yesterday. Yeah. Um, has the careful and responsible management of well-being of the populations. So we are all part of governance. And if we play all our roles, you know, we are contributing to the good governance wherever we are regardless of the level, okay? And in 22, of course, WHO has outlined the six domains of uh, <coughs> the, the sub-functions of the governance. And uh, we have also the generation uh, of intelligence, which is extremely important. The formulation, uh, uh, the for formulating strategic po policy directions, like we have the, 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 the global action plan, that is the strategic direction that has been given you know, to the world. And now countries have the responsibility to translate into their own policies. These are the national action plans that we are talking about now, and ensuring also tools for the implementation. And that goes with power, incentive, and sanctions. Extremely important that we cannot only put the tools without all these uh, measures in place. Building coalitions and partnership. Nobody can really uh, tackle the issues of antimicrobial resistance alone. That is why you, you have different institutions coming together in the con uh, concept of One Health to uh, try to address the issue of the, <coughs> the antimicrobial resistance and ensuring a fit between policy objectives and organizational structures and cultures 
we have seen uh, what I show you, for instance, for the example of Africa, we have different institutions that are working. The mandate seems to be different. But when it's come to antimicrobial resistance, everyone has a, uh, has a stake. Everybody has something to say there. So you have to bring them all together for the common goal. And also ensuring accountability, whatever we are doing, accountability for the resource uh, use, accountability for everything that we are doing. In there. So it's extremely important. And uh, of course, uh, in, in 2007 WHO uh, framework for action, uh, these principles were uh, cemented as one of the six key building blocks of the health system. I'm not going to remind you on that one, under the domain of leadership and governance. So it is extremely important. Health governance now, um, just to summarize what I just said, in the, in the health sector refers to a wide range of steering and rule-making re uh, related functions carried out by government decision makers as they seek to achieve national health policy objectives that are conducive to universal health coverage. So if you forget everything, don't forget this one. Now, what is governance in the context of antimicrobial resistance national action plans? IMR is driven by interrelated dynamic in human, animals, and <coughs> environmental health, uh, uh, <coughs> health sectors. You know, we have talked about it for the first uh, four days, and uh, action to address IMR should include mechanisms that coordinate IMR policy intersectorally. We know the complexity uh, that we need that necessitate policies that range in diversity form. Surveillance, we talked about surveillance, we talked about awareness to regulations, we talked about uh, stewardship, infection prevention and control, etc. in the context of human, animal, and environmental health. That is why I like this course, because really uh, it is uh, showing the, the right direction uh, uh, to go. We know the challenges. Sometimes we have all the policies, plans, everything, national action plans, but there is little commitment to implement, right? Uh, especially when we, it comes to domestic health financing, we don't put money, we have plans, but they are not funded. We know also uh, the, the, the multi-sectoral coordination mechanisms you know, uh, is a problem. And I'm going to, to show you the example of Ghana uh, in this presentation. And of course, there is the verification of activities programs. For instance, somebody is working in, in, in tuberculosis. Sometimes, you know, everything is in tuberculosis. They don't even look around to see what is happening somewhere else, you know. Uh, somebody is working in uh, HIV, etc. So this verticalization, we need integrations, and everybody needs to talk to, to, talk to each other. Now, there is um, a governance framework, extremely difficult to find, but two studies. This, one, this, this, this was uh, one, uh, uh, the first one that was published. Um, a couple of years ago, and uh, during my presentation, uh, the uh, during the first course, it was just this one, this study that was out, but there is a second one, I'm going to take you through quickly as well, that the inherent complexity uh, of the driver's demand systematic approach to governance. That is, we need that approach, right, a systematic, and um, no comprehensive framework for the governance. This was the first tentative, right, to develop it, and uh, also to address the unmet needs uh, this review presents a, what a governance uh, framework for an implementable national action plan should look like. That is why, you know, the, this process was conducted. They look at uh, uh, some uh, uh, published uh, documents, and uh, they found 26 governance framework that was identified for publication, and uh, most the, the 11 most frequent key governance domains across this framework were identified. So I'm going to take you through quickly. Uh, these are the, um, the different stages. You have uh, four stages, and uh, the aims, the method use, and the results. You will have the presentation. I'm not going to take you through all. So this is what was proposed. Um, three different steps. The step of the policy design, you need to really to to give you a strategic vision, you need to bring, of course, the participation, extremely important, because AMR is uh, one health approach, coordination, accountability, transparency, sustainability, equity. You need to go to implementation uh, with your, the, the different tools, and then do your monitoring and um, 
uh, evaluation, but it is an iteration. So this is the framework uh, with three uh, areas and uh, the 18 uh, domains that has been uh, proposed. So this framework was designed to really help policymakers implement, monitor, and uh, implement uh, antimicrobial national action plans across the one health spectrum that I said. And it was the first study that provided comprehensive systematic synthesis of available evidence uh, on the governance on, on, uh, on antimicrobial uh, resistance. And uh, the second one, I found it recently um, when I was re re looking at my presentation. And uh, it was published in the, the Lancet Regional Health, Western Pacific. Uh, it was published you know, this, this year, an analysis of national action plan uh, on antimicrobial resistance in South Asia. And uh, they, they propose another framework for assessment um, where you have one health engagement uh, at the center and uh, you find the same you know, uh, elements on the, uh, the 18 uh, uh, domains. Um, you have the policy, uh, design, the implementation tools, monitoring, evaluation, and the added sustainability. Because in the other framework, if you remember, you know, uh, funding was part of the implementation uh, uh, tools, but now, uh, given the fact that the <coughs> it was extremely difficult and challenging to, to, to fund national action plans, they said, no, let's take it as uh, another, uh, you know, domain uh, extremely critical. That, these are the two really studies that <coughs> in this. So we know that MR governance requires collaborative approaches um, with wide range of actors, as we said, and uh, the IGCS, uh, I, 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 uh, AACG on AMA recognized that a stronger sustained global leadership advocacy, powerful global narrative, and uh, vision were needed to advance the global response to AMR, and uh, of course it is always a multidisciplinary approach. Uh, AMR is a contested space, we should know that, where uh, actors with distinct values present their, ver uh, their version of the problem, resulting in different possible solutions. We have vet sector, environment sector, health sector, and we have all different approaches, but we need to come together because it is a, a public health threat for everyone, right? So we need to find uh, 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 solutions. And lack of robust uh, evidence regarding the political and economic context coordinated is another uh, issue, you know. And also the positive of research and evaluation governance strategies. We need, especially in Africa, nothing has been done. And Ghana is at the end of uh, uh, its uh, governance, uh, uh, I mean the national action plan. Uh, and we are looking closely what is being done there so that in the next course then we will really go in as a case study, uh, take Ghana as a case study. So this is the Ghana National Action Plan uh, on Antimicrobial Resistance that is coming to an end this year. And of course, it is a multi-sectoral approach. You know, four ministers have signed this framework. Ghana is a very good example uh, of what is happening. You know, you have the Minister of Health, China, the Minister of Food and Agriculture, the Minister of Environment, Science and Technology, Innovation, and the Ministry of Fishery, Aquaculture, Development. So they all come together to have the National Action Plan. And how it looks like, the National Action Plan for Ghana. I'm almost done. Huh? There, there is an interministerial uh, committee with these four ministries. And uh, uh, on the top of it, you have the office even of the prime minister that is overseeing the implementation. And they have, of course, the MR multi-stakeholder platform and, and the chairs. And they bring also uh, other stakeholders, communities. Everybody is there, even the rep representatives of you know um, people in the livestock area, people in uh, uh, um, uh, those who are you know even selling meats. Everybody, everybody is there. You have also donors and partners. You have the sec uh, secretariat uh, coordinators because all these ministries are coordinating together and you have implementing agencies in MR technical subgroup and working groups. Uh, this is a, an extremely good example 
of an implementable national action plan that comes from the, the global action plan. And Ghana, Ghana, Ghana really uh, uh, said that. So today, where are we uh, in terms of uh, in 2021? So we have the, the, the issues of uh, funding uh, for activities to address them. Uh, you know. It is a key issues for many countries. This is globally, right? And uh, as of July 2021, 145 uh, countries have developed uh, national action plans, and additional 41 are in the process of developing one. Remember that in the global action plan, it was asked for countries to develop. By, by, by 2021, for instance, all the countries, but some have, are just starting the process, right? And uh, according to a recent survey uh, by WHO, OIE, and FAO, only 20% of these plans are fully funded. That is why I found the, the other, uh, you know, the, the second framework that I presented extremely important that they have taken the funding has a big domain on its own, really, to look at this. Uh, the, this operational plans are a problem. So in con conclusion, uh, the, the cyclical design of the framework reflects the dynamic nature of uh, MRs, defining and assessing uh, governance of AMR are really challenging. So these are just the selected resources, and thank you very much. We need to have a generation that is looking like this girl, free of AMR. Thank you so much.